Hello, class. Welcome back. This tutorial will introduce the support vector machine regression and classification model, and also the ni uh, neural network uh, regression and classification models using the multilayer perceptron model. And we will also use the inference data set we used in uh, our last tutorial for building the regression models. And on the other hand, we'll use the income data set that we used in our decision tree model for building the classification models. And we will also uh, introduce three different, uh, two different approaches for conduct a threefold cross-validation evaluation. Well, let's first import our insurance data set. And we will then recall the structure of our data set. So if you re still recall, uh, in total we have seven different variables. The variable expenses is considered as our target variable, and the rest six uh, variables are considered as predictors because this expense, expenses variable is a numeric variable, which means it's a number. So we will need to use a regression model to predict the health expenses in the future. And we will first split our data set in a simple way. We will use 50% of the instances to construct the training data set. And for the rest 50% percent of the data set, we will further partition them into 20%, 25% and 25% as testing data 1, testing data 2. So let's run this chunk. Well, we have repeated this process like three times already. So, and here we will first build a support vector machine regression model. Well, this model is in, uh, in the library, in the package curl lab. So we'll first load this library. And then we will build this model using KSVM model. And similarly to the decision tree and naive basin models, well, this is our target variable. And we use the dot to represent the rest variables as predictors. And we use the training data set to build this model. And support vector machine include many different kinds of kernels and here we use one of them called rbf dot kernel and here we see a parameter c well um, the effectiveness of a support vector machine is based on the kernel the selection of your kernel and the kernel parameter and also the soft margin parameter c well, if you have a small value for this parameter C, the uh, training error will, will increase. We will have a larger training error. But if you have like a larger value for this parameter C, your model will be more easily to overfit. So here we use the default value C equals to 1. And then we build this model. Well, you can always use this question mark and the model name to, it will show you all different kernel names and all the parameters and all the kinds of models. And next, in order to predict and evaluate the performance of our support vector machine model, we still use this predict function and also add metric. Well, because this one is a regression model, so instead of using accuracy, precision, and so on, we will still use these six different type of error measures and correlation and R-square measures. So let's, let's predict the result on our text data one and text data two. So you can see um, the R square for both the testing data sets reaches 82%, around 82%, which means this model can explain 
82% of the variance for our testing data set. And the correlation is pretty good, which reached to 0.90. And next, we will build the new, uh, neural network models. We will use the multi-layer percentron models from RYCA to build our neural network models. Well, we need to first load our RYCA model. And then using using this make Weka classifier to locate and simplify the name of this model. And noted that there are a few different parameters that are required in our uh, neural network model. This this multi-layer perceptron model. The first one is learning rate. The default value is 0.3. And the next one is n, which is the number of the epochs with default value 500. And another uh, parameter is h, which is a layer, hidden layers to be created for this network. And the default character is a. Well, there is another uh, parameter called M. M stands for the momentum. So it is the momentum read for the back propagation algorithm. And the value is from 0 to 1. The default value is 0 0.2. So we will build a default neural network model using this multi-layer perceptron model, MLP function. So we will also still use expenses our, our, as our target variable and the, the rest six variables as our predictors and build this model on training data set. So this model is equivalent to the L equals 0 0.1 with all this parameter equals to their default values. So let's build this MLP model. And then similarly, we'll also use predict function and, ma and metric function to predict the expenses for the patients in our testing data set and then evaluate the, predict uh, evaluate the prediction. So we will use these two, four, four lines of arguments to predict and evaluate on both testing one, testing two, two. So comparing to the support vector machine model, well, this, mod this model performed better on the testing one, testing two, because comparing to only around 82% of variance, this, this uh, neural network model can explain 80, oh, around 85% of variance for the testing data one and testing the two, and also the correlation um, are higher correlations are higher when, than the correlation we use by the support vector machine models. Well, because this model is from the RYCA package, we can also use the evaluate VICA classifier function to um, to replace both predict and M metric functions. So it will directly generate the prediction and evaluation for us. But it only presents as four different error measures and no cor correlation. Oh, there is correlation, but no R square. Well, next we will use um, we will introduce two approaches to conduct the unfold cross validation evaluation. Well, it is similar to what we did before using the for loop to generate n pairs of training and randomly select training and testing data set and using training data set for uh, tra uh, training data set to build the model and testing data set to predict and evaluate and then we go through like because we generate n pairs we'll use n time uh, iteration for n times and get the average uh, evaluation from this n pairs of uh, data sets well, similar to that, uh, unfold cross validation. First, we need to uh, partition the instances equally into n different collections, and then for because we now have n collections, 
we will need n different iterations. So for each iteration, we'll use one collection as testing data set and the rest n minus one collections as training data sets. So for example, we if we use a tenfold cross validation, we will have ten collections of instances. And for each iterations for each iteration, we will use one collection as testing data set and the rest uh, two from index two to nine or uh, to ten, so there are like ten collections of instance will be used as training data sets. So here we will introduce two approaches to build the threefold cross validation. The first step is still to set seed. Uh, in order to get the random results repeatedly, consistently each time, we need to set seed. And then we use this create false function to um, equally partition the instances into like how many folds you want. You set this key equals to how equals to the number. So here, let's look at this function. The first parameter is the target variable we're gonna use is a y the instance uh, the expenses. And the second parameter is specify how many folds of cross validation do you need. For example, if you need like 10 fold cross validation, you just change the 3 to 10. And it will partition the instances into 10 collections. But now we use 3, so we have 3 folds. The create folds function will generate 3 collections of instances. And we store this. Um, uh, those are like index. We store those index into this false variable. So let's first create folds and then we see the structure of this fold. So you can see that it is a list with three variables of three elements for fold one, two, and three. So for the first fold, we have 445 elements. And the index, those index are the index of uh, rows from the original data set, R3, 4, 8, 10, and so on. Those are like randomly selected. So, we fold, so for the fold 2, we have 447 uh, instances. For the fold 3, we have 446. So basically, numbers of instances in each fold are similar, is similar. And uh, and then we create two, like one list and one array to store the evaluation results from each iteration. And next is a for loop. Similarly to the for loop we used before, now inside this for loop, we'll no longer need to um, randomly generate using the set seed and then randomly generate the um, uh, training and testing data set because now we already have three folds available. Because we want uh, we wanted to build a three-fold cross-validation as an example to show you guys. So we will need to have three different iterations so the iteration number is three. So inside each iteration, for example, if it is the first iteration, well, we will use this folds with i equals to one. So it is the instances from the the fold at index one. So those instances will generate and construct the testing data set in the first for the first iteration. Well we use a minus sign to exclude the fold number one. So we will include fold number two and fold number three, all the instances from these two folds to construct the training data sets. Well if it is the second iteration, well we will use the instances from fold number two to create this testing data set. 
and the rest instances, the instances from fold number one, fold number three, will compose this training data set. Well, similarly, for the third, our last iteration, uh, the instances from fold number three will construct the testing data set this time. And the instances from uh, uh, fold number one, fold number two will use to construct will be used to construct this training data set. So now we have both training and testing data sets ready for each iteration. We will now use the key SVM function to build our support vector machine model similarly. And we'll still use the R RBF dot kernel and C equals to one. And then we will use predict and a metric function to predict the expenses for the instances in our testing data set and evaluate the uh, model performance f using the metric function. Well, we will store the six mirror errors and co correlation coefficients and the R square values in first inside this list. And then we use the C bind to append those values from this list to the array. And after three iterations, we will use the row means to calculate the average evaluation measures for the six error measures and also the correlation coefficient and R square. And let's run this one. So after this row means, we will generate average evaluations. These are actually the uh, the average number uh, from this three different three different iterations. Well, let's go ahead and introduce the second approach of generating the info cross validation. Well, the uh, the first a few steps are the sim are similar to the previous approach. And instead of using the for loop, now we will introduce the function list apply. We use the list apply function to generate this info cross validation method. Well, how does this list apply function work? Well, the first parameter is a, is a list, which is, in our case is a folds. Folds consist of three elements, fold one, two, and three. Well, the second element is function with x as his as its parameter, and inside this function, we can see there are like the construction for training and testing data, building model and predict model, and then evaluate model, similar to the R commands inside the for loop before. And note here, uh, we do not have the array and list to store the Evaluation values from the uh, from the error from this six error measures and correlation on R square. Instead, we have a return function. So this return function will return this evaluations back to the CV results. So how does this list apply function work? Um, they will first look at the, how many elements are inside this loop. So in our case, we have three elements, fold one, two, and three. So for each element, we will have one iteration. So in our case, we'll have, we'll generate three iterations inside this function. And for each iteration, it will replace, they will replace this X by the elements from this list, respectively. So for the first iteration, they will first replace this replace this x with fold one, and then this x will become fold one, fold uh, fold one. So the steps will similar will be similar to the first iterations from our previous approach. So. Then it will return the evaluation values from the six, uh, eight different measures to the CV results. 
So after three iterations, this series of results will become a list also with three elements. Each element consists of eight different measure values. So let's see the structure of this CV results. So it consists of uh, three elements from fold one, two, and three. And each element also consists of eight measure values. And these are the attributes titles. So let's see. Let's see the fold one. And the fold two. And the three. So basically we got the same results um, as we did from the previous approach. And then we use the row means to combine these three folds, uh, the evaluations from these three folds, and get an average evaluation. Well, we have already learned the two approaches to construct the unfold cross-validation for the support vector machine. Now we will use these two approaches to build the three-fold cross-validation for MLP, which is our neural network models. Well, the steps are the same. Besides, we just um, replace the KSVM by MLP. And let's run this model, run this cross-validation models. So basically the performance of this neural network model are similar to the performance from support vector machine. Well, because this MLP model is from the RYK, we can use a simpler way to build this unfold cross-validation by using this evaluate YK classifier. So first, we still need to use this make YK classifier function to identify and locate and simplify the name of this model and give the name MLP. And then we will use this MLP model to create this new network uh, regression model. Well, see here, we just fit this model with the whole data set, the data equals to insurance, which is our the whole data set, including all the instances. And then we use this evaluate YK classifier function, giving the model based on the whole data set and the whole data set as our second parameter. But to in the, for our third parameter, we specify the number of folds equals to three. So this evaluate YK classifier function will automatically build the model, um, uh, pred uh, make the prediction based on model and evaluate the prediction. Uh, these processes are all automatically conducted using this evaluate YK classifier. You just need to fit the number folds equals to three, and then we will get the results. So let's see. But however, however, we only have uh, four error measures and one correlation coefficient measure. Well, we use the default values for parameters L, M, and H when we built the multilinear perceptron models before. Now we want to change some of the parameter values and see their performance and the, their speed of executing the arguments. So the default value for the parameter learning rate is 0 0.3. We will change them, change it to, we will reduce, first reduce them, reduce it to 0 0.1 and increase it to 0 0.8. So let's run the default value and then the changed values.
Well, if we reduce the uh, learning rate value from 0 0.3 to 0 0.1, you can see that the performance will be increased. However, if you reduce the learning rate, the speed of executing the R command will be, uh, will be increased. Well, on the other hand, if you increase your L value from 0 0.3 to 0 0.8, the performance will be hurt. However, the speed of executing the, this R command will be increased. Well, next, if we want to change the parameter value I'm from 0 0.2 to 0 0.05 and increase it from 0 0.2 to 0 .5, 0 0.5. So let's see the results. Well, similar to parameter L, which is learning rate, if you change the momentum rate, if you reduce the momentum rate from 0 0.3 to 0 0.05, well, the speed um, of execution will be decreased. However, the performance will be improved. Well, similarly, if you increase momentum rate, you will get faster execution speed but the performance will be will be hurt well next we want to try different hidden layer numbers we want to try zero hidden layers and two hidden layers so we will use h equals to zero and compare it with h equals to two so let's run these two models so you can see that, that with more hidden layers, the performance will be better. However, the execution time will, will be larger. But if we have no hidden layer, we only have the correlation coefficients equals to 0 0.62, which is not very good. Well, last but not least, we will need to try different numbers of abax. We will try uh, n equals to 200 and n also equals to 700. So let's try these two models and see. Well, similarly, if you have more numbers of uh, more numbers of apex, you will have better performance. However, uh, you will it will take longer to execute the R commands. So it basically is a trade-off between the performance and the execution time. Well, besides changing the parameters for neural network models, we can also change parameters for our support vector machine models using also in three-fold cross-validation. Um, well, the default value for this C, sub-margin C parameter is 1. And that we use we used to use the RBF dot kernel, and now we want to change the C value, reduce the C value to zero point one and increase it to five. So let's see. So you can see, um, well, if we have a smaller value for C we will have more training errors. However, if we change, like we increase the value for parameter C, we'll have better performance. However, this model is more easily to overfit. And next, because we have many options for kernel selections, well, um, we used to have the RBF dot. Now we want to change it to polydot and that plus dot. So let's try both dot, uh, both kernels. Well, so this is the performance for the Laplace dot, and these are the performance for the polydot.
So definitely there are more um, kernel selections. You can try them offline. Well, this is basically everything we will cover in this tutorial video. In our next video, we will introduce how to build a support vector machine and neural network classification models. Thank you for listening. Bye.